Hey guys, welcome to Snowbreak Containment Zone and uh, this is our ultimate Wild Hunt Life Build Guide. So again, we're going to go be going through all of the things that you need to know on how to build her properly. I actually used her since day one and she has been my number one operative ever since. I love how she is, you know, she plays. I ha I love how she is actually built. Um, it's it's actually unique more so for her skill rather than her ballistic damage. Let's go to the build type and let's see how she looks. So um, I have here um, Wild Hunt. So again, her build type would be skill focused, especially uh, on her active skill and her support skill. Um, she's gonna be spamming her her active skill and support skill is also fantastic if you have your a separate main DPS and if you want to she's actually crucial for support skill especially when it comes to um, trying to control bosses or mobs that you need help in terms of crowd control she is fantastic at it for support as well again as I've said she's versatile she can be your main she can be your support and um, a secondary build would be for a gun DPS, but I'm not really inclined into building that because that is not her strong suit. But I will answer your questions just in case um, you have ideas for her for DPS. I'll give you kind of a suggestion later. But she is really main. Her her main build is basically for active um, active uh, skill. Um, and also for her support skill. So she's not going to deal much damage for her gun. Okay, so moving on to her skills. So we have here her standard skill, Frost Wolves. So this one is a barrage of uh, Dire Wolf. Um, no, no. Barrage of Frost Fangs. So this deals AoE Frost damage. Consumes 25, 25 Breath of Snow. But you have to recharge this before you shoot it again so this will usually coincide with your shooting and with your releasing of your standard skill okay so this one scales off the attack of wild hunt so 35 percent of attack plus 31 if you level up the neural skill especially the the first one it can apply a chance to freeze at 10 percent which is one out of ten it's nice to have but it's not a high percentage when Breath of the Snow is full, increase the final damage of Frost Walls by 20 as well. So that is, this is going to be her bread and butter. You're going to be building her kit around this skill. And also for her support, this is the one for control. So this one is live quickly attacks the area in front of her. So this is an AOE in front of her if she, you run her as support. Frost damage and freezing targets for 4 seconds. This is actually long. 4 seconds, especially for a boss that you need to basically um, hammer out. Um, you could paralyze, you could freeze for a moment for 4 seconds then. Um, shoot at it and more or less you could deal more damage because that boss cannot move or a mob cannot move. Okay, and also applies a frostbite effect which deals frost damage also as well so this one also scales off the attack increases the range of uh, wolf's fang by 50 percent and the duration of frostbite by 10 which is very useful especially if you're working at a distance um, the other one the other, other neural skill is when life or other operatives apply frozen effect to the enemy target an additional frostbite effect of wolf's fang will be applied to the target so this if you have a frost team this is going to be nice as well okay the third one would be her ultimate skill this is also for, for control life removes the limitations of their web sentinels and launches a blitz attack and also freezes for four seconds again this is not her main skill that you're going to be using it's going to be these two but this is also nice to have especially if you could pull this off increase the duration of eternal blizzard eternal hunts frozen effect to six which is very nice as well. And the other one, the other neural skill is going to be if a target is frozen by Eternal Blizzard, Eternal Hunt, and the target's HP is lower than 5, then it's basically insta-kill. So as for her day was alignment, if you scale her off um, alignment index, so wild hunt increases by um, skill damage of wildlife 
of wild of life wild hunt increased by 14 for each 100 alignment index extra three that's roughly 17 for every for every 100 damage dealt toward targets under frozen effect increased to 150 percent so if they're frozen they hit um, this hits hard as well it, um, gives your skills a more a increased damage in terms of if they are frozen so that is it for her skills so again focus on your standard and your support skill if you really want to build her next up is going to be her weapon so for her weapon this is a no-brainer you definitely need stardust memory um you need it because um, if you can read the skills, increase frost damage by 18, gain stacks of Icing Star after using standard skill, and gains one stack of Icing Star when standard skill deals damage. E cooldown, 0.2 seconds. And this basically, what it, what it says, it, 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 it contributes to the damage that um, the standard skill can do. so And also the mechanic as well. So again, this really amplifies her standard skill. If you don't have this weapon, so this is Stardust Memory. I already have maxed it at level 80. If you want to change this, if you don't have this, uh, you can go with Ionized Jellyfish. The reason why I want you guys to, to carry a Frost Damage weapon, because it plays to her M1 or Manifestation 1, which we'll go to later. So after defeating enemy, recover 0 0.9 um, S energy, which is standard energy. Cooldown is 2 seconds. And this is also nice because this contributes to her standard skill. But again, preferably if you can get this one, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be more beneficial for Wild Hunt moving forward. Uh, at this point, um, it's really optional if you want to get copies of this. As long as you have one copy, it will be okay. So no, 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 what do you call this? No requirement for a second copy really for um, Stardust Memory. So let's go to the parts. Um, the good thing about um, Wild Hunt is that some of her parts may be unlocked through story missions. So the later stories will unlock this one. Uh, Stone Toro, it's a scope, gives you attack 14, stability 27. This one, the silencer also unlocks in, in the content for the story. So this one also increases attack, which is the only yellow one that I can see here. So most of the parts that she has, including the magazine guys, this can be unlocked through the story as well. So again, uh, you don't really need to unlock other weapons really in the in the earlier stages you just have to unlock the story it's not really a prerequisite that you unlock um other um what they call this other four star weapons or five star weapons to unlock some of the parts you just need to clear the story um also for this one this is stardust memory so this is actually the guns level 50 unlock which is um, one of the one of I think best other than this one this one contributes to defense but this one is better because this is really built for the gun ADS mode stability 30% and attack in 11 so those are the things that you should consider when you are equipping or modifying or inserting parts to your weapon if you take off um, the what they call this the parts it looks ordinary but once you put it in it looks magnificent magnifico so moving on to the next part which is your logistics logistics wise this is going to be a bit of um you know a three-part talk so logistics wise um despite whatever logistics you will put on her um preferably the stats here the talent stats is going to be attack percentage uh primary attack percentage and alignment index if you don't have those it's okay it's really hard to farm these so prefer uh, preference stats will be attack percentage alignment index and elemental damage for the third one which is actually harder to get secondary skill that you need to have in the talent is going to be skill haste just in case if you don't have the others you can you know you can put in skill haste for a moment and probably just um look for another um logistic with the same you know with the same group 
um, as soon as you have one available. Uh, as you can see here, I need to change the max HP, but it doesn't bother me at this point. I could probably just, you know, recycle this in the future and it is what it is guys so that is it those are your talent stats that are required so align uh, attack percentage alignment index elemental damage which is force damage and secondary priority would be skill haste which is this one okay so there are three types of logistics that i would like to recommend to you guys number one is um the one that i'm using which is theme squad so Thieves Squad is increased active skill damage with 24%. If you have all three, each time a starter skill, ultimate skill or support skill hits the target, increase on attack by 2% for 5 seconds. So this is going to be max 20 stacks. Uh, 20 times 2, that is max 40%. Um, as you hit um the, the the second duration doesn't matter actually as you hit continuously hit so it continuously continuously goes into stacks so again this is what i'm using i've been using this since not really day one but i used a you know a lesser uh what they call this lesser um squad than this one so for now you can actually use this um the other one that i recommend eventually guys um it doesn't matter in terms of the uh the purple you know the purple what they call this the purple logistic you can actually use any of those you'll eventually be farming these so eventually you have to prepare and they're they're easy to farm i don't think you you'd have a hard time farming theme squad even for a a mismatching talent but again if you just have at least one set then you can use them immediately the other recommendation that i'd like to take you guys to let's go to um not here just get the shop so for um the other ones that i am recommending aside from theme squad the other one that you might want to consider if you're into that one gives you more damage this one is also increased active skill damage with 24 but after dealing damage with an active skill or auxiliary unit the targets resistance to the type of damage decreases by 16 percent so this one is very useful especially if you don't have um akasha kaguya at this point this is very, very nice to have because right now I do have Akasha Kaguya. I don't need a decrease anymore. So that is why I didn't use this. But this, you have a choice to use this as well. This will also increase your damage because the resistance is lowered for frost damage. So again, this is one of the things that you can use or the logistic that you can use. The other one, if you are building her for a for a more of a gun dps oriented you know uh build this is the logistics for you so increase ballistic damage by 24 when shooting continuously each shot increases ballistic damage by three percent max 20 stacks so this one is going to be a max of 60 percent but this only uh, in terms of your ballistic damage while the other one while thebes apply the 40 percent applies to all attack okay so um again it would really depend up to you if you go this route then definitely get truman for additional uh ballistic dps but again i would recommend ultimately thebes squad if you already have akasha kaguya if you don't have akasha kaguya then definitely twilight squad would be good so that is it for your logistics so for manifestation um m1 is going to be crucial because if you have a frost weapon shots that hit accumulates 10 breath of snow hits that uh, hits the weak spot or target accumulates 15 breath of snow so this one enables you to recharge your uh your 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 standard skill so that you could maximize damage so this one is crucial make sure that you have a frost weapon again you need ionized jellyfish uh if you don't have stardust memory so this is important um uh manifestation one is going to be crucial manifestation two is also a nice to have 
up until manifestation 3 so this one is breath of snow maximum maximum capacity but definitely you need to reach at least uh m4 because frost wolves skill level plus one increased damage of first wolves frost fangs to 38.5 percent of life's attack plus 43 so this takes her to a different level and um again if you can have her maxed at four just in case that uh, you missed it uh, she's going to have her banner soon probably in the next uh, few days um uh, as soon as the current banner expires for chen Xing, if you're a cloud then you have the chance to if you want to build her you can build her up to m4 because her rate up is going to be increased let's move towards her neuronics so her neuronics is priority would definitely go with the first one the frost wolves cluster either of them would do next priority would go to the wolf fang cluster which is your support skill either of them would do as well as long as you finish it so these are the first four that you should finish the last two would be pertaining to the ultimate skill eternal blizzard so the hierarchy and priority is going to be frost wolves Wolf's Fang and Eternal Blizzard, Eternal Hunt. So that is it for her your Neuronics. As you can see here, um, uh, skill damage of Wildlife. Wildlife increases by 14 for each 100 alignment index. So uh, make sure that you're aware of how much her alignment index is uh, because it increases, uh, increases damage. Okay, so skill. So all of her skills. Uh, toward targets under frozen effect increased by 150 as well. So if we go back to life's um, stats, so I'm currently at alignment index 358 and her attack is at 4000. So definitely um, at this level, at level 75, I'm at 4300 on attack. Hopefully, I don't know if it's possible if, to take, if I could take her to 5000, but definitely. That would be a big help. Her alignment index, though, I need to carry this to 400. So I have to modify her logistics in a way so that I could reach at least 400 for her alignment index. Okay, so moving on to her best supports. Best support number one definitely would be Kaguya because of this one, the Moon Halo, which decreases all resistance type by 24%. That is why you won't be needing Twilight Squad if you have Kaguya as your support. So this is perfect for her. The other support that you will be needing, which is very, very you know effective for her, is going to be Chen Sheng 4 Star. Um, because once you, for example, if you're using Chen Sheng with her, when once Chen Sheng deploys this, this skill, the drop pod, it actually has a effect for her manifestation. So Drop Pod creates a Slayer Aura, increases skill damage by any operative in the area by 15%. Which is bonkers, guys. That is 15%. As long as Wild Hunt is in the area, then she can avail with additional 15%. And also, if you take a look at her support skill, uh, once you unlock this one, after picking up a Talisman Birth, increases standard skill damage by 10% for 3 seconds. So, when you time this right, definitely you're going to be availing of another 10%. So, if you take it overall, that's going to be 15 plus 10. That's 25%. So, again, Chen Xing, aside from her additional, for, for her, you know, support skill, which gives you HP, this she can really bump up the damage of wild hunt if you bring her in that team the other one um honorable mention if you want to enjoy spraying your enemies without the limitation of hiding then therefore you're going to be needing um series here for the shield so again this is going to be perfect for her because she could just spam all of her skills um, at the back of the shield and no harm will come to her unless if it's um, somebody who jumps over the shield or damages through the side but again this is a very nice 
um, support skill to have, which series has. So those are the three best supports for her. So you have uh, Kasha Kaguya, you have um, Chen Xing, four star, then you have series four star as her best supports. Okay, so moving back to her. So if you guys just uh, want to see her in her best form, so this is, I think, the best uh, skin that they've had so far, uh, so far as uh, the, the, the game is concerned, and the best skin for life. I enjoy actually using or bringing life in this skin. So definitely, guys, if, if you want to main life, um, I would suggest you get this skin. I don't, I, this is not, you know, this is not uh, cheap. It's quite expensive at 20 plus dollars. But again, I think it's going to be worth it, especially if she's your main operative. If she's not your main operative, then definitely um, it's not going to be mean much to you. But if she's your main, definitely this skin is going to give her more value, especially for aesthetic. And I'm going to be talking about my overall thoughts. Part of that was the skin. The skin, this skin is tremendous. Um, can't go wrong. Please get it, guys, if she is your main. She is future-proof, by the way. And as you get more copies of her, she becomes more and more staple in your roster. Very versatile. Again, um, the reason why she's future-proof, because she is that good in both roles. As your main DPS and as a support. She's good for both. So you won't really hesitate in, in bringing her in your roster. Um... One note though, um, glaring weakness would be armored units because of the ricochet, because of her gun type, which is sad. But again, that's a very minute thing to consider, especially if you've leveled her up to 70 to 80. The gun damage is actually very good that you can ignore ricochet. Um, again, armored unit units and bosses and also mechs are going to have a ricochet for her gun. But again, you're not bringing her for the gun. You're bringing her for her standard skill. She excels in crushing mobs uh, with minimal support. So let's do a demo, guys, on what she can do. Okay, so let's solo this. This is phase 10-3. Let's see how she goes. Um, this arc, this is, she's actually really built for clearing mobs, guys. Um, can't go wrong with what she has for her kit. So as you release um, her standard skill, it's gonna charge here. There's a there's a meter in by her side, so you can uh, hasten the charge as soon as you use your gun. As soon as you create more hits, then you can hasten that. I would suggest that you fully charge that meter first before you use her standard skill to maximize her standard skill output, because there's also a cooldown on your lower right hand side so with that you can actually fire do a fire and forget so and you also be mobile once you use her you're very mobile you're not going to be very stale you can dodge you can what do you call this you can evade as long as you need because again her standard skill is going to find the target wherever they are it doesn't need for you to to track it down or to lock it down so it will just look for targets especially if you have them in your field of view so this one is a bit tricky because we need to finish the stage in the time limit available and we need to defeat at least a couple more mobs here so as you can see a few hits there but no biggie, I'm still good. So there is the last boss. But we need to take care of these buggers here. Because they're going to be a handful if you don't take care of them. So standard skill freezes one. While um, you have to take care of this one. Reload please. Okay, so now we're, we have one more enemy left. Which, again... For, the, for her standard skill, she can freeze it because she, you only have one target and the 10% is going to kind of kick in. 
So that is it guys. That is how she can solo mobs without any support. I tell you I tell you she is very fun to use. If you don't get her, if you don't have her, you're going to regret it guys. So um, I would suggest that you keep her in your roster. Make sure that she is going to be part of your roster. Either you're going to be bringing her as your main DPS or you're going to be bringing her as support for your main DPS. So again, very, very nice character. I wasn't able to showcase her support, but definitely if even for those mob scenarios, you can solo those even without any support whatsoever. As long as they're not armored and as long as they're not mechs. So again, guys, thank you very much for staying this far. Take care, stay safe. This is The Warden and I'm out of here.